Hello and welcome back to Operations with Void. This week I will be going over Nurai in a uh, brawling battleship. The previous time I did Nurai in a battleship, we did slow battleship. I think that might have been my first video way back in Colorado. I'll go ahead and link it here. Anyways, uh, this one will be... Uh, what to how to run a brawling battleship be, it's mostly because I often see people hanging back in their turp bits and their uh, Bismarck sitting behind the transports which eh, they're being cautious but a little bit too cautious anyways uh, you see I do have a 21 point captain uh, I was planning on running this a lot more when it was still tier 7, but it's uh, a brawling, but also a little bit into um, pre uh, preservation. So a little bit into survivability, but mostly into the uh, brawling build. Uh, now you have 105s, and that is why we have IFHE. Because the 105 millimeters with IFHE pens 32 millimeters, and this gets you most of the extremities on a lot more ships. It basically makes the 105s useful instead of just the 150s. And it's also oh, IFHE plus 105s is what makes German secondary so much better because they actually pen and do damage whereas secondaries on other ships don't pen 30 millimeters usually. There are a couple exceptions but usually they don't. Anyways with that we'll go into battle. Okay. As I mentioned it's Narayan and uh, here I am just going by myself with uh, no division. It's a little bit easier with division because you can talk or communicate about who's going where and how you're doing but without a division you tend to need to be the one in front the one taking everything because if you're not in front everybody's just going to fall even further behind ship commanders suppress enemy resistance provide cover for the convoy so, with Scharnhorst, since you have a lower caliber gun, faster reload, you can take a shot at a Mio Breton, and then shoot again at uh, the New York. But with most battleships, you don't have a reload fast enough to do that, or to do it regularly without slowing down. So, we look at it, focus our secondaries on it, and then we wait for the New York. Sometimes, closer, you can just outright delete it. We're, I think we're just a little bit too far away to actually do damage. Maybe we just didn't got unlucky. But oh well. We have secondaries to rely on. That's part of being a brawling ship. You will take some of your damage with your secondaries. There we go. There's a citadel. Both the ships should go down relatively soon. And. So I look at that. These torpedoes are really slow. So that's more of a backup plan. So. And I put it in ahead of the white line because the ship there generally speeds up rather than slowing down. But again, it's uh, the, the torpedoes are so slow that it's probably not going to hit, or one of our ships are probably going to 
kill it before our torpedoes hit. I'm probably just going to get more overpants on this to the end. And there we go, no more torpedo tubes. So here, the uh, since the torpedo tubes on the end are taken out, <laughs> and we're about to kill it, we turned in so that the Farragut couldn't get torpedoes off. So we're we're just making sure that torpedoes are not going to hit us. So we don't really need hydro for that. Hydro was there earlier. It's more of looking out for the torpedo angles and you know knowing a ship that has torpedoes basically any destroyer and any cruiser that is an American minus the few specific American cruisers. So and then just knowing what torpedo angles they are. And if it's Japanese they're, they're pretty much the only ones that you can be in front of and not get torpedoed. But if you're not sure on the torpedo angle, crossing the T so that you are, you're showing broadside and they are bowing, they will not be able to torpedo you. There are currently no ships in ops that have that ability. There used to be one. There used to be one in Killer Whale, but currently there are no ships that can shoot torpedoes straight ahead. And so there we go, two uh, full pens through the nose, I wish one of them were the Citadel. We're focusing on Leander because Leander is uh, it, it has a lot of torpedoes. It has more torpedoes than most destroyers. Whereas Lagao, on the other hand, only gets two torpedoes per side. And now, so now the torpedo threat is up, we're going to sit here and wait for the Missouri. There's two things you can do. You can rush around, and so if we had actually rushed around much earlier, we would be facing the Missouri. But that is dangerous because you're going to be uh, in the focus of fire, and Missouri overmatches the nose of anything that's not tier 8. And it, it overmatches the nose of tier 8 battlecruisers. So since we don't want our bow uh, pushed in from Missouri's large caliber AP, we're sitting here and waiting. We didn't need guns either. We could have gone further. The torpedoes were enough, apparently. But now we need to push ahead. Because, uh... Well, this we kind of actually let our team pull up. And, well, we want to push ahead, but, if you notice, nobody's gone for carrier. And this is why... This is actually... The point. You don't actually need anybody to go for carrier because once Missouri is dealt with, then uh, then someone can break off and start dealing with carrier. There are certain cruisers that want to be up there early, but you don't have to. And in fact, I think it was meant to be that at this point someone goes off for carrier. It's not like transports where uh, you need to be up really early. Or you're going to miss a 
transport. So, since since no one is going to take care of the carrier in a fast uh, battle cruiser that I am in, I have decided that I will go for the carrier and have made very clear movements to start going that way. And the destroyer suddenly decides it does not want to go into the harbor. I can understand. I would not want to go into harbor and a destroyer uh, when there's a Cleveland there. So the destroyer comes ra racing back. And I think seeing the destroyer coming racing back, the French cruiser decides to start turning. So now we have three ships going after carrier, and this is also not what you want to do. I am slow. Well, sorry. Ba uh, being in a battle cruiser, it's difficult to turn and change directions where you're going very quickly. You can get somewhere fairly quickly, but you can't choose where you're going to go very quickly. So since we're already going this way, we're going to keep going this way, despite the others start showing that they're going to go this way. And we have slow torpedoes on the way. Um, Lexington doesn't really dodge torpedoes. So those are going to hit. Now you see a cruiser running back. This is another thing. If you see somebody, if it's only the carrier, you should not be turning back. It doesn't matter what ship you're in. If there's one ship there and the carrier's, one ship's by the carrier, you just go on into the harbor. Because usually that one ship can take care of the carrier. And so because two ships uh, went way out of position, the harbor is actually down two ships. And so and they actually another cruiser started pulling back for the carrier. So you technically only needed me, the one ship, uh, there, but three other ships went and decided to be useless. So if you see someone going after the carrier, generally you should not go after the carrier unless they specifically ask for help. Now, if it's a single destroyer going after the carrier, you probably want to uh, send them help because a single destroyer usually cannot take down carrier. But a single cruiser or larger should have no issues with doing taking out all three ships. Unless it's a tier 6 battleship. Well, I guess a tier 6 ship. Hey, five over pens. I think I, the Indianapolis uh, outsped my torp and my guns. I'm sorry, I cannot English today. What is my English? So now we're going in this entrance of the harbor, and we're just going to keep going. Just keep on going because. Uh, the closer you get, the more effective all of our armaments are. Especially with how slow our torpedoes are. You notice, because our torpedoes are so slow, we, there is actually a destroyer right in the path of where we want to launch our torpedoes for the QE. Oh, it's 
So we have given up launching torpedoes at the Kiwi. They'll just use the normal gun style. I think I will be throwing torpedoes at the Chapayev. And then, yeah, see, the Chapayev. With its speed, it's perfect. And then I'm going to turn and use this island kind of as a shield between me and the cruisers in Colorado. Since I'm out of repairs and out of heals. If you're out of repairs and out of heals, you have done well brawling. Because you've been in the thick of it and you've been brawling. If at the end you have all your repairs and all of your heals, uh, you were being too passive with your battleship. Well, uh, in this case, battle cruiser. And I guess if you're running another bra brawling ship like Bismarck or Turpitz, repairs number doesn't matter. And we narrowly avoid the uh, Chapai of torpedo. So I could have probably could have gone for a ram, but with how hard that the, the Colorado is hitting, and it will hit that hard from the, any angle, I decided to go for the torpedoes. Try and get some guns off. There, it didn't work. Now, yeah, there we go. So we were able to push in from the side while all of our ships are hanging back. And you see where one cruiser is behind the island. That's actually not a bad place uh, that you can kind of see into the bay. You need someone to spot for you, but uh, the cruiser at D9 is perfectly fine. It's the other cruisers that were hanging back too far. And so we lost a transport, uh, two transports. So here we have 320k, and if you're over 300k damage, you're doing well in a brawling ship. In fact, that should be normal for a brawling ship. And here we are, top of the board. Um, as you notice, our main battery is most of our damage with 80k for torpedoes and 90k for secondary battery. So all of our armaments had an impact in this game. And any brawling sh I guess Bismarck doesn't get torpedoes, but Gneisenol, Heinrich, uh, Scharnhorst, the new Scharnhorst 42 or 43, what they're doing. Uh, let's say Renown 43. Anything with uh, Turpits. You have secondaries, you have uh, guns, you have torpedoes, you should be using all of them. You should be within range to use all of them. Even if it's only a 6 kilometer range torpedoes, like Turpits, you should be in range to use them. Even more so, since Turpits has the 32mm bow and can bounce shells uh, by going bow in on Missouri. Anyways, if you have any questions or comments, let me know. Uh, if you have a specific ship you'd like me to display or show how to play, let me know. I'll do my best. And with that, I hope to see you again next week. Feel free to like and subscribe if you want to.